All right, the moment we've been waiting for the actual parallax effect. And on this finished version over on the right, if I start to scroll, you can see how the background image kind of moves in parallax as the text moves over the top of it. And that's what we're going to be building out today. So let me move back to the project we've been working on right here. And uh, what we're going to do is add a couple of odd things, but just follow along with me. All right, first of all, the, what I want to do is add an overflow hidden to the entire body. Now, we did this earlier, and that kind of messed us up, but we do actually need that for this to work because we're not going to be scrolling the body. We're going to be scrolling this parallax ID container. I don't really need an ID on here, so I'll just delete that. That was just to remind me what that div was for. I do need some classes on here, though. So what I want it to do is to take up the entire height of the screen, so H screen. And then I want to give it some extra padding. So by default, I want padding bottom of 12. And then once I get on small screen sizes, I can go ahead and remove that and set it to zero. Next, when it comes to the overflow in the Y direction, I want this to be set to auto. So it should scroll for us. In the left direction, however, I want it to be hidden. And you can see how already now I actually have a scroll bar back, but I'm not actually scrolling the body. I'm scrolling everything else. And you can see that because this stays right here. Now, the reason it's staying right there is because it's inside of this wrapper, but this does not have a position of relative. So if I put relative on this, uh, the nav will now be relative the, to this wrapper. So as I move, now it will change. But notice that the body itself is actually not scrolling. We're inside of this div right here. Next, let's handle one click event. If I come over here, we, you might remember that we added at the very beginning this to where when I click, it'll jump me down to this section. Now, what I actually want to do is change this just slightly so that it's a smoother experience. So let's set scroll to smooth. Now, if I click on this, it should just slowly move down. Uh, now, here comes the magic part. We're going to add some CSS, and then we're going to add a couple of classes. So let me first of all open up my CSS file. And so far, when we've needed to customize Tailwind, we've either added it in the config or we've added like an arbitrary variant like we did with that hover state. Now what I'm going to show you how to do is use the layer utility. So if I type at layer and I use the utilities, I'm essentially going to add some classes that I can use to the utilities. This will give me access to things like small screen sizes and all my other attributes. If I need them, I won't. But this also gives me one other advantage, and that is that in kind of the tailwind way of doing things, utilities essentially should override anything else. So this ensures that this will override anything that might cut this down later. So I'm going to add a couple of classes here, and I'll just paste this in. So I've added a class of perspective, preserve 3D, distance 1, and distance 2. So let me talk through this. And what this perspective property does is essentially give me a scale in the Z direction. So I'm saying, hey, let's consider the scale 1 to 100. And I can set that to any number. It's just that all the other numbers are going to be worked off of this perspective number. Next, I want to make sure that I transform the style to preserve the 3D, so I actually get that 3D Z effect. And then I'm going to have two different distances. One, I'll translate it away 100 pixels. Now, knowing that the perspective is 100 pixels, when I scale it away 100 pixels, I have to basically go down to zero from 100 pixels and then down another 100. So I'm two times away from the screen in the Z direction further away. So I'll show you how that works in a second. But all you need to know is because I'm two times farther away, in order for it to look like it's not two times farther away, I need to actually scale it up as well. And then we're doing the same thing here just for different ratios. So now that I'm only 50 away, I only have to scale it 1.5 times to get back to 100 pixels. And that 100 pixels, again, is something that we set up here. So let's go ahead and save that. Now I can access any of these classes uh, in my HTML. Now, all this magic is going to happen in my header. But first of all, I need to come up here and add my perspective. Now, that perspective class, again, sets the scale for my Z index to 100 pixels. Now that the wrapper has that, I can come into the header, which is where all the rest of the magic is going to happen. And I'll add preserve 3D. Now, if I go ahead and save this, nothing's going to change yet because I haven't actually added any distances anywhere. But to kind of make sure you understand what's going on here, let's go ahead and change this. And I'll comment this out and just remove the scaling effect so that you get a better sense of what's going on. So if I come back over here to my header, let's first of all apply a class to my image. We'll use that distance 1. And now you'll see it's two times further away than you'd expect in the Z direction. So it's farther away from us. Now, why is that? Well, because we've got Preserve 3D here, it's enabling us to view things in the Z direction. And then my perspective is set to where 100 pixels is all the way fully up. That distance 1 transforms the z-index, however, the opposite direction, an additional 100 pixels. So I've got to go from the 100 pixels down to 0, and then another 100 pixels down to negative 100. That's why it looks twice as far away as it otherwise is. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch this back. But just like in real life when things are further away, the way that they move to our perspective is a little bit different. 
So now if I come back over here and I start to move, you can see that it's actually scrolling at a different speed than everything else that's on top of it. Now, when I eventually get down here, you can see that this uh, black overlay we have here is not working with the image anymore because it's not scrolling at a different speed. So we wanna make sure that we set that to the exact same thing. So we'll say distance one. And now if I come over here and scroll one more time, you can see that that black background scrolls along with everything else. We have a couple other problems as you can see, so we'll fix those in a second here. And then before we fix anything else, let's come down here to both of our H1 and also to that button. And for both of these, I'm gonna add distance two so that they scroll at a slightly different speed than the background. Let's come back over here and as I start to scroll, you'll see that they are now scrolling slightly differently. Again, we've got some more problems we've gotta work on, but mostly that is working just fine. And once you start working with layering, it can be difficult to figure out exactly what's on top of what and why. So let's come back over here and I'm gonna open up the dev tools. And if you hit Command Shift P, you can search for anything. And here I wanna do show layers panel. Now this gives me access to a 3D model. And if I click right here, actually let's pull this up. I can now move it sideways and kind of see what is on top of what. I can even scroll in with my mouse. You can see how every layer is interacting with the one below it. So this one is staying on top now and all those are kind of just sliding in behind it. You can see that happen though in real time, which is pretty cool. So let's come back here one more time. I'll refresh, and as I start to scroll, all that just fades in perfectly. Now we were having a problem earlier where it wasn't showing properly on mobile. Let's see if just refreshing took care of that. It looks like that was taken care of, cool. All right, so that should fix everything for the parallax scrolling. And again, this is mostly just the top section of the page. And then as we get further down, obviously eventually we just have this black background behind everything. All right, that's parallax scrolling using just CSS, and it really isn't too much work as long as you understand kind of how the concepts work. Seeing it live in that layers panel for me was kind of what unlocked everything. All right, in the next and final video, we're gonna add some animations where the text blocks and sections below will kind of fade in as you scroll the page. All right, I'll catch you there.